How to use Slack for client communication step by step. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you guys how you can use Slack for client communication. So let's get into it. Now, there are two primary ways that you can use Slack for client communication. Now, I already have created my Slack account and you guys will see this is one individual workspace. Now, if you are on the premium plan of Slack, you can actually create multiple different channels in one individual workspace and allow different permissions. Those permissions will allow you to create a separate channel for a separate member while keeping all of your clients in one workspace now this is only available if you have the premium version of slack and this is not my preferred method unless you are dealing with clients in the same industry where it might be easier for you to communicate because you know everyone knows each other then it might be all right to do that but if you have to upgrade to the premium version of slack only to be able to restrict access i have a simpler way you guys can do that so i've created my account on slack and to build a client communication portal i like to click on create a new workspace over here and i like to use a new workspace to get started with each individual client the reason for that is because i can keep all the information regarding that particular client in that workspace I can share all the files in that workspace. I can add all of the team members that are working for that potential client's work in that workspace to make it easier for any of their questions or queries to be answered in a fast and efficient manner. So we're going to click on create workspace and we are going to create our workspace and then begin our customization. So the first step you're going to do is enter your company or client name. So let's say our client name is Peekaboo Inc. And after that, I'm going to click on next over here and then I can add a photo as well. Now, I'm just going to skip that part. Now, from here, you can start adding your colleagues. Now, you can actually copy an invitation link and send that to your client or you can add their email address over here. Now, I'm going to skip this step for now. And then after that, you can create a specific channel. So whatever you enter here usually is added as a default channel or like a starter channel. So it's easier for you to set up. So let's say for Peekaboo Inc, we are running um, newspaper ads like this. So I can add that over here. Now, there might be multiple different clients or people or representatives that you're dealing with from one client. So this is also an efficient way for you to do that because you can build separate channels for separate uh, tasks that you're doing for that client. Now, once we have created our Slack workspace, we are going to begin customizing it. Now, I like to start customization with the workspace itself. So on the top left, you can click on the name of your workspace, and then you have your preferences and settings and administrations. So you can click on your preferences over here to set up your notifications, your sidebar, and in your sidebar, you can show specific default items. So let's say I want to always display people or I want to always display all channels over here. Then you have your themes over here to choose whether or not you want, you know, the different colors or variations of Slack as well. And you have the default versions, you have the light and dark versions as well. Then you have your language, accessibility, red, audio and video options. So if you want to host some meetings with your clients, you can do that over here as well. Then you have your connected accounts, privacy and visibility. Now in privacy and visibility, first off, you have your Slack Connect visibility. So who can find you via a Slack search? Then contact sharing. So whether or not people are able to share your contact info so they can introduce yourself um, to you outside of Slack. So people outside your company, this will include external people who you add as guests in Slack then any invitations you've blocked and people you've hidden and then you have some basic advanced settings with shortcuts now after our basic settings you also have the settings in administration and you can open up the detailed settings over here in your settings of your workspace of your uh, peekaboo incorporated customization and more now, once we have created our channel, I like to begin adding our colleagues so we can enter the name over here and invite them. And then I like to add different channels from here. Now you guys will see there's a general channel and you can click on each individual channel's name on the top left. And this will give you the name, topic, description, and creation. Then you will have any of the files attached. 
and then you also have a huddle section now you can click on the integrations to see any applications that have been integrated into this particular channel and then if you click on settings over here this will show you posting permissions which can be a very efficient way of managing your communication with clients on slack so you can click on edit over here and edit the posting permissions so let's say this is going to be admins only or admins plus specific people. Let's say I like to keep the general section for admins only, and you can choose to allow threads where everyone would be able to add reply to a message, but they would not be able to add a message. I don't want threads. And then you also have the everyone here and channel mention. So add everyone would notify every single person that is in that particular channel. And then this would notify everyone of that channel and add here notifies members of a channel who are active at the moment so i don't want those settings as well so i'm going to save this over here and now only people only admins can post in this particular channel this can be a great way to set a separate channel for your communications that are related to only updates or maybe you're going to invite a guest in that particular workspace so you can go on ahead and invite one particular member you can add a guest to that workspace and once those guests want a brief overview of all of their progress you know the client just wants a brief dashboard they don't want to see uh, the detailed communication they can just go into the general section and be able to monitor just the day-to-day -day updates now if you click on the people and user groups you can actually see all the people and then if you click on more over here you will be able to see some options such as your messages and reactions direct messages and unread messages you also have the files option to be able to see all of your team's files that have been shared in slack for client communication it's very essential that you're able to provide all of your data at once and whenever something needs to be found it can easily be found with the search bar and then you have your basic canvases section in slack so with canvases you can store information in slack over here as well now we have a random channel over here but if you don't necessarily need a channel you can go on ahead and go into the settings and click on delete this channel and then we're going to click on permanently delete channel and now this will be deleted now if i want to build a new channel i'll just click on over here let's say this is going to be our mouse ad campaign and then I'll click on next over here and then I can choose whether or not this is a public or a private channel. So let's say this is only going to be a private channel. I only want people that I've invited to be able to see this and then I can click on create over here. Now once you do this you can add the people that should be able to see this channel. So I'll just add one email over here. And then I can click on add over here to add this particular person and then I can invite more people as well or I'm just going to click on finish. Now this will actually show you a locked icon over here that means that the channel is only visible to members that have been invited. Now you will also see in your members section you have integrations and then settings and then you can even edit it to you know change the name later on and then you can also change it to a public channel if you no longer require the added privacy so i hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to get started with client communication on slack if you did find this helpful make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our youtube channel and i will catch you guys in the next video